Happy Monday, everyone. This is January 23rd, 2023. My name is Kim Landis, and joining me is America Guerrero for the Doja Live recap show. Hello, everybody. Happy Hello. Monday. Hello. Happy Monday. So what do we do here on the recap show? We recap last week's show um, to give you an idea of what we saw here, what we learned on Doja Live, and then, of course, to introduce this week's shows as well. So last week, we had a total of three shows. Uh, up first was Beyond Personalization, AI, and Digital Banking with Finalytics. Joining us was Craig McLaughlin and Mark Ryan. Following that was Spotivity and CEO Montana Butch, all about how data and creative thinking are super powering teen decision making. And then we wrapped it up with a part three of a part four series all about the metaverse brought to you by Encora. This one is about beyond the imagination and how uh, the metaverse is being represented in pop culture and vice versa and what that means for digital fashion and more. So let's kick it off with the Phenolytics show uh, that was with Craig McLaughlin and Mark Ryan. What did you think of their show, America? It was so interesting to see the chemistry between Craig and Mark. They have been working together for years. And now that they are part of this company that is humanizing the digital experience, it's amazing. What I am sorry for that, Tony. It's okay. It's okay. We can barely hear. You go, you go. Okay. What they do is that they provide a customer centric data platform designed to help credit unions translate high touch service into the digital channel. That's what I understood. And it was a really interesting conversation. You know, super interesting how they're just able to collect data and just help, help. I mean, first of all, I think it's the, the shift in the future. This is what is happening now. More and more physical uh, locations of being able to do your banking is are being closed, right? So we have less and less options of physically walking into a bank. And so the expectation is we're really going to have to amp it up and simulate this high, high touch, you know, personal experience that we can have in that one-to-one, -one, but in a digital space. And with Finalytics, they're able to do that, to gather data, to, to present this to the banks in a way that help them um, better target and, and, you know, do better sales, but also in a way that's going to best um, benefit, right? The bankers, the people using their services to find the best fits and the best options for what their interests are, for what their capabilities are, and, and so much more. And we also tapped into this idea of presenting to people, I think, what they don't know. How do I know what I don't know? And this is a way for um, other, you know, banks and other financial institutions to, to be helpful and to really um, help their users in a really high touch personal way. Really good show, right? Great chemistry between the two. Super, super fun. Be sure to check out that show. Following up was Spotivity with Montana Butch. And this is about spotting your activity, developing your passion and achieving your goals specifically for teenagers. And I think they're moving into the university space as well. What did you like from Montana's show? This is also related what of what you don't know when you're a teenager. Oh God, I would love to use this platform during my high school years. I know that counselors can help you a lot in this part of knowing what you want to do in your life mm -hmm. and everything. But having access to what Spotivity offers, it's amazing. And it's also useful and fun. I remember that they have this point system so you can keep record of the kind of activities that you do outside of schools so though that this will help you with university it is really awesome it is i mean the entire network that spotivity is looking to to build not only for students themselves but also the community in which they live i think is a really cool approach uh and yeah there's a point system so the more activities you do the more you register that you can accumulate points and then utilize those points uh, at coffee shops and you know other retailers and restaurants and places in your local community um, and cool stuff, right, that kids are kind of into. But I think the really cool part here is encouraging, again, the how do I know what I don't know? And I think he used his own story, which is a really great story, um, how he ended up, um, oh, no, I'm having a loss for words. He was a, a rower. This is Let I'm from Montana, y'all. We, we did not have this anywhere near us in Montana, <laughs> right? Um, but just opportunities like for your aptitude, your interests, your physical build and bringing to, to light activities and things and interests that one might really enjoy, be really good at and open up opportunities in life 
but that they may have never been considered, you know, without having used spotivity. I think the usability is really great here, how they really hone it into, you know, what teams are into on platforms, mobile platforms that they're already using, making it super easy touch, very fast. And they also give you a kind of transcript of sorts, right? A summary of your activities, the hours that you've participated and all that, which I think is also really helpful in terms of seeking out scholarships and other things as they move on to their, if they For choose the to move the on parents. to their collegiate paths. Yeah. That? For the kids and the parents and also yeah. coaches and partners and everything. It's yeah, a whole super, network. super fun. And then, of course, his own story is a fabulous one as well. And just what he's passionate about. Definitely a show worth watching. And we wrapped up the week with the third show of the four-part series of All About the Metaverse. This one was honing in mostly to the pop culture representations. What did you think of that show? Well, I really liked when Fermin shared that with the metaverse, when the pop culture started with authors, metaphors, and ideas of interacting with computers. This is how it started. And he I also think the mentioned- the 70s or something he mentioned. Yeah. Well. And he also shared an example of how, for example, Neil Stevenson, he took ideas from Apple's human interface guidelines as an inspiration <laughs> to create novels. So this is how it started. It's really interesting what I learned on that episode. It's really interesting. I think that that show was a really nice conversation of what, as individuals, right, their favorite representations or really what they see as really good representations of the metaverse and pop culture um, that have arisen, what they liked about it, what they think is interesting, useful, hopeful, or what they agree with, maybe what they think is not actually going to be the path that we're on. But I think it comes back to this interesting question of, we get to participate, we get to create what it is and the excitement of why can't, right, the metaverse actually be better than the world in which we live. This no limits kind of mentality, which is kind of fun, but then always having to balance that out with the ethical side. And so just a lot of questions, really fun conversation about um, about that. And next week, they'll be following it up with the fourth episode, the closing up that series. And this one's going to be about social impact. And that one's going to be really focusing on how the metaverse is being used to better the lives of people in healthcare and education and more. Um, but I think in terms of what's actually happening, right? So it's not just about entertainment and gaming so much more. And so do catch what that's going to be all about Friday, 10 o'clock Pacific we also have two other shows this week. Yes. So we're going to have a show on Wednesday with da, 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 Sunil Mathu. Mathu. Sunil Mathu, I guess. CEO of the company Instant. And they're going to we are going to talk about arbitraging. Oh, sorry for this working. Arbitraging. Ar arbitraging and securitizing fraud risk in the market. This is going to be a conversation at 10 a.m. Pacific on Wednesday. And then we're going to have another show on Thursday, which is going to be with Rodrigo Melato, sales VP at Pismo. And the topic is going to be about legacy modernization in the inevitable path for all banks. We didn't and get you're arbitraging, right. but inevitable is a really hard word. And you nailed it. So oh, thank you. <laughs> I was just shaking. <laughs> cool. So see us here Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday this week right here, Dojo Live, 10 o'clock Pacific. Thank you, everyone, and have a great, great week. Bye for now.